numbers from some previous load instructions. Now we might want to add those two numbers together. The control unit receives that instruction from RAM and then tells the ALU what type of operation to perform. The ALU performs the operation and then outputs the answer. Sometimes, though, depending upon the type of instruction, the output from the ALU can actually be ignored. For instance, if you have a compare instruction, the ALU doesn't need to output an answer. Instead, it just needs to tell the control unit how the two numbers compare to each other. For this, the ALU uses what are called flags, and they help the control unit decide what to do when it receives the next instruction, like jump if, which we'll see later. For now, though, let's say that we are working with an instruction that does produce an output. Where does that output actually go? Well, the eight wires coming out of the ALU would actually run to what is called a register. A register is a very simple component whose only job is to store a number temporarily. Registers act just like RAM, except they are inside the CPU, making them faster and more useful for storing a number temporarily while an instruction is being processed. When the ALU sends the output to the register, it won't actually be saved until the control unit turns on the register's set wire. The set wire is just like the one we saw earlier for RAM. When the set wire is turned on, the register saves whatever number is on its input wires. Once we have the output saved in the register, though, how do we get it back out? Well, when we are ready to move a number out of the register, we need another